everybody, it's Natalina and I'm coming to you from my backyard garden today. It's July here in Ontario and that means that we're starting to get some uh, beautiful vegetables harvested out of the garden. And what I have here is, is I have my basil plants. So we've got lots of beautiful fresh basil and a question I get all the time is, is how do I store basil for the long term? What do I do with it when I get all this basil? Well, we actually grow two harvests of basil. So this is the first one and it's usually ready around now. And the other one was planted, you know, a couple weeks after this one. So it'll be fully ready, ready to harvest in a couple of weeks. So it's kind of nice to space them out like that. But I want you uh, just to see the different types of leaves. So why don't you come in a little closer there? So I want to save these nice, tender, soft leaves from the top. And I'm going to come in close. They're really tender and soft. I want to save these for pesto. The thicker leaves, um, okay, this is a really good example. This is a really thick one. Not a lot of marks on it. So it's perfectly fine to preserve for using um, to flavor a sauce, for example, to throw it in or to chop it up and add it to a recipe. But I wouldn't want to use that for um, pesto because it's just too too thick, okay? So what I'll do is I'll harvest the whole plant, I'll cut it all down, bring it inside, we'll sort out the yellow ones that have marks on them from insects. Those will basically just go into compost and then the rest will wash them, we'll air dry them, and we'll make some wonderful things. So let's go in the kitchen and I'll show you what I'm gonna make with them. Okay, hello everybody, it's Natalina, and I'm here in my teaching kitchen where I've been teaching authentic Italian cuisine and Southern Italian favorites since 2011. And I thought, uh, given that it's July and it's time to harvest basil, I would share with you just what I do with my basil when I harvest it. So what I've done is I picked one of my plants there that was ready to go because we do actually, we have a number of basil plants and my husband, when he plants them, he, he spaces them out. Um, so he'll plant the first one, then he'll wait a couple weeks, he'll plant the next one, and then he'll wait a couple more weeks and plant the last one. So that way they'll all be ready at different times and we can enjoy fresh basil throughout the whole season. So what I've done here is I've harvested an entire plant and I've removed any discolored leaves or bad leaves, leaves that have been eaten by insects, etc. I'll just put those in the compost. And then what I've done from there is I've removed, um, while I was washing them, I removed any coarse stems, okay? So any stems I have left here are just small, thin ones. Typically, the middle stem is really thick and coarse, and it's too coarse, so you want to get rid of that. So I, I would compost that. Then what I did is I picked out all the tender leaves, typically the younger leaves. So these are a good example here, really fine uh, baby leaves or tender leaves. And what I did is I separated those out. Now I've measured out two cups here and I'm going to make some basil pesto with those because it'll be much nicer with the tender leaves uh, because basil pesto, you're basically eating them raw. So if they're um, tough and thicker, they just don't make for a very nice, nice mouthfeel. You want the nice tender leaves. So I've set those aside and I'll make um, some pesto with those. These other ones here are a little coarser, a little bit more mature leaves. And these are what I would use to flavor sauces, okay, or to add them to a recipe chopped up. But of course I could never use all this up in, you know, a week before it would start to wilt and go bad. So what I do is I freeze it. I find that um, next to fresh, the next best thing is frozen as opposed to dry. I never use dry basil. I find there's not a lot of flavor. It doesn't really add much to a dish. So first and foremost, I try to get fresh. And if I can't get fresh, then I just reach into my freezer and I grab what I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with today. So after it's um, air dried, or you can use a salad spinner to get most of the liquid out and then lay it out to continue to dry. Then what I do is I take my food processor bowl and I stuff it full just with the blade in it. Okay. So I'll probably have enough to do two here. And you can do this with other leafy herbs as well, such as parsley, which I do do this as well. Uh, if you use a lot of cilantro or other leafy um, herbs, you could do it with those as well. So I put them in there, you know, pretty, not jam packed, but I'd say that's pretty full. What we're gonna add to this with my particular bowl, I'm um, not sure how many cups are in there. There's probably a good three cups in there, I would guess. Um, about three tablespoons of olive oil is what I like to use. You can use any um, oil that is flavorless um, because of course if you were doing this with cilantro you probably wouldn't want to use olive oil, you might want to use something 
uh, more neutral uh, that you would use in a recipe that would require cilantro, okay? Because I'm preparing this mostly for Italian dishes, I will use olive oil, okay? So I'm just gonna eyeball about three tablespoons. So that's one, two, and three, okay? And that'll be enough just to help form this into a paste. So we're gonna put the lid on and tighten it up and we're gonna pulse this, okay? Make sure it's moving around, make sure the oil is enough in there, that it doesn't, especially if you packed it in tight, it might get stuck. So it's pulsing fine, so now I'm gonna let it go on low for just a few seconds. And I'm gonna turn it off. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in there with a wooden spoon or a spatula and we're just going to move it around a bit. We're going to make sure that the big leaves get processed because sometimes what will happen is they'll get stuck. I'll just push them all down and I'm going to go on high now just to... Okay, so you only want to do this um, until it's chopped up really fine. You don't want it um, totally, you know, liquefied or anything like that. So I'm going to go in and push them down just one more time. So when we freeze this, the olive oil will help prevent uh, freezer burn. And it'll also help um, kind of just coat each of the little pieces of basil so they stay a little fresher in there. Okay, so this is all chopped up. You could make it finer if you like. I'm not gonna be able to show you a close-up of this, but it's very, it chopped up pretty tiny little pieces, okay? So depending on how fine you want it, you could leave it there or you could have it go for a couple seconds. Okay, I think we're good. So now what I'll do with this is, I'll remove the blade, and actually the blade came out pretty clean. If you needed to scrape it down, you would. And then what I would do now is I'm just gonna scrape this into a freezer bag with a zip top, okay? And I'm gonna get all the air out of the bag, get all the air out of the bag, zip it up, and I'll toss it in the freezer. And basically I can go in in the next few months and I can just take off a piece, however much I need, and I can just add it into a recipe as I would with fresh. So the next best thing to fresh is to preserve it in the freezer. So I hope you enjoy uh, this little video to show you how to take care of, you know, basil, parsley, or even cilantro or other fresh herbs that are leafy, okay? Um, please check out our website at natalinaskitchen.com. Check out our YouTube channel, other videos, and please subscribe, and we'll see you soon in the kitchen. Thank you.